isle of wight may be the south coast's best kept secret superior citizens who always go abroad on their holidays don't know what they're missing and the rest of us are glad that they don't for this is a truly civilized place which in the 1880s karl marx no less called a little paradise take the ferry from limington to yarmouth with its welcoming harbor and then walk or bicycle or drive or take the bus across the westernmost point of the island to Freshwater Bay on the south coast, and you'll see precisely what the gruff old founder of the communist faith had in mind. Here, the light is as bright and as crisp as anywhere in Europe. Here, the waves break on the beach as clearly as they have for a thousand years and more. And here, the air is as refreshing and as healthy as the most demanding doctor could think of ordering. To the west is magnificent Tennyson Down, where the great man once walked, leading to the distant and foam-flecked needles. Nearly 500 feet above the sea, the green chalkland offers stunning views in all directions. To the southeast is Bryston Bay, with its surfers' waves, while close by there are downland and woods, streams and country lanes and thatch to delight the eye and to lift the heart. A few hundred yards inland from Freshwater Bay is the source of the River Yar, which flows north to Yarmouth from here and virtually divides West White from the rest of the island. This is no Blackpool or Scarborough with flashing lights, hoopla and funfairs, and thank heavens for that. It is, though, a perfect place for walking and talking, for thinking and for refreshing yourself, for having visions and dreaming dreams. Above all, in its simple and straightforward beauty, it's a seaside village where you can enjoy the perfect rest and relaxation which everyone seeks to discover in the troubled and uncharted waters of the 21st century. From the Sandpipers Hotel in Freshwater Bay, Phil Keane runs his hang gliding and paragliding school, appropriately called High Adventure. Phil first came to the Isle of Wight when he was four years old and was obviously gripped by the place at that early age. Because after a stint in the army, he's returned to make use of the downland and the cliffs with their upward air currents, thermals and other excellent conditions for the sport. Nevertheless, you have to have nerves of tungsten to spend your life challenging gravity. OK, what hazards have we got here? Penny. We've got a pond down there. A pond, yes, that's a good one to miss. Andrew? Barbed wire fences, yeah. And also one up to the right as yeah, well. Yeah, important you don't fly yeah. into those. Yeah. Gorse bushes over there. Yeah, that's a good one. We don't want to go into those. And there's a farm at the bottom. There are cows in the field. There are gorse bushes all down the sides. If you went for side landings, you'd have to be prepared to miss the gorse bushes. OK, look at the sea. Off we go. Penny, she's into windsurfing and everything else. She's not decided yet. She's done about two or three days, but she does like it. Um, I think um, ladies are a, a little bit more concerned about the, the um, element of, uh, of risk, but um, they make better paraglider pilots and more coordinated. You do have to have coordination with paragliding. Andrew is a hang glider pilot. Um, he's learning to paraglide um, because a hang glider is a big, long, heavy thing to carry around. And um, if you're hitching a lift um, where you've just done a cross country, then you're more likely to get a lift with a paraglider because it fits in a small rucksack. The island is absolutely brilliant place. Being by the sea, we get nice smooth air and sea breezes. Up until um, last year, um, canopies were manufactured on the island. Uh, they've now gone to Austria, like uh, a lot of industry has. But um, it's still a very, very good place to learn. Nice grassy slopes. Mick, um, he has been flying for quite a long time, uh, about eight or nine years. Um, he's a very good pilot and he loves it. He's just got his tandem license, which basically means you can take another person with you. Um, so he got his tandem license a couple of weeks ago. Um, he works on the Isle of Wight. I think he's a prison warden, would you believe? 
Right, the conditions are not too bad. It's a bit easterly. The wind's coming from the east, therefore this corner is working well. Uh, there's a bit of mist coming in, so that's the only thing we're concerned about at the moment. We don't want to get to cloud base too soon. But, um, and the art of this is uh, lots of practice and go to a good school to learn, basically. <laughs> It's an adventure sport, it's not just a walk in the countryside, but if you listen to your instructor, do what he says, and then I think the danger occurs once you've learned you start showing off or you start flying in weather conditions that are not suitable. The good thing about learning to fly on the coast is you get nice smooth air, nice sea breezes that make very smooth to fly. I think the main thing is, is to be coordinated. Um, we normally take them from 16 plus. We have had uh, a gentleman, I think the year before last, he was 76. He wasn't ever going to get his license, but he wanted to do a flight off the top of the bowl, and that he did. Uh, he was very happy.